So, you guys walked in here. In the following situations, are you going to help these people? I'm going to assume you guys are all good people for this. If someone's rushing towards the door, but you're already there, are you going to hold it open for them? Maybe you're at a hotel and they're like, hey, can you push the button for me? I need to get to the 29th. Are you going to help them? Or let's say you run across a stranger on the street and they say, hey, I left my phone at a Halloween party recently. Could I borrow your phone to make a call? Because I wouldn't, because you fell for a cyber attack. And you're probably thinking, well, aren't they like this? Well, actually, to prevent against those attacks, physical and cyber, we need to know what cybersecurity is. Cybersecurity is defined as measures taken to protect a computer or computer system against unauthorized access or attack, or as I like to call it, breaking into things for fun and fixing them afterwards. Nice. So how does this tie into physical security? Because you're thinking, this is a cyber talk. How does cyber lead to computers? Where's the physical? So imagine a Rubik's Cube. You don't have to imagine now, but there's a way for you to be able to crack the code if you know it, this is two rotations. Now imagine if I wasn't physically holding this, but this was somewhere far away, and I could only tell a person, hey, can you turn this edge, can you turn this edge, or shift it this way? But that's one way to solve it. If you have physical access, there's not really much stopping you from just breaking it apart and reassembling it to then solve it, or taking the stickers out and replacing it. You've technically solved it, although some world record holders would disagree. Essentially, physical access means total access. Now, why do I bring this up? If you get access to a physical laptop, what can you do with it? Well, for starters, that bottom right corner is where the hard drive is. This thing, this is where all of your files for your laptop are stored, including your operating system, browsers, files, that giant project you've been pushing off. It's all in there. But I'd like to talk about browsers specifically, right? You've all heard of cookies, and they're stored in your browser somewhere. And you may be thinking, well, it's a laptop. I get it stolen. Someone breaks into it. Why do I care? I can just tell the company, like, hey, my laptop's stolen. I need a new one. But you may just be a normal person, and you're thinking, what are they gonna do? Like do my homework, file my taxes, like that's so scary. But really it's because attackers are like the cookie monster. They're after your cookies because cookies, which are stored here, remember that you're logged into school accounts, social media accounts, and personal accounts. Personal accounts, which could include your financial accounts or a private messaging app or really just about anywhere that you've existed on the internet. And the picture up on the middle is just to show that you can take one of those hard drives and put it into another computer, sort of like a USB drive. It shows up like any other file or folder. And this one specifically is for Firefox. There are two folders in here that contain all of the browser data for this user. So what can you do with that? Not only do you have immediate access to all of their signed in accounts, you have all of their saved browser passwords, and better yet, you have their browser history. And this is why you should care. Physical access, right? You don't always have to break down doors for this. Maybe it's taking apart a laptop or letting someone in the door, just like earlier. Essentially, it's finding a different way to get in. It's not always about just breaching or breaking into something. And the nice thing about physical things or just things about our world is that people make things, people design things. I know we all hear about AI and ChatGPT and how it's getting super advanced and coming up with ideas, but they're not going to materialize a new idea. People are still making the things. And so when people make things, people make mistakes and you can take advantage of those mistakes. Now, how many of you guys have seen this? Show of hands, right? You're probably thinking this is in front of like a gated office or gated community, sort of like this. 
Now, there's something nice about this, at least from a security perspective. It's this lock up here. Well, you're thinking, well, why do I care? Think about how school buses are able to get into gated communities, or better yet, in a gated office, it would be USPS. They have to have some way to get in without knowing every possible combination or secret code for each community. So what do they have? These keys. And no, this is not some like secret hidden away key. You can get these off of Amazon for $26. And inside, there's a tiny button for you to press which will just swing open the gates for you. And how many of you guys have seen this? Handful of you, probably in an office or a school. I know we're digitizing a lot of things, but there are still some enterprises and businesses that will store their data of clients or maybe financial data or like really old records in these. And in the top right corner, there is a key and a lock. And you can probably guess there's a key associated with that. And you may be thinking this is also not that expensive. Now, what's interesting about keys, right? If you have one, I would advise you to take them out. Um, this key specifically has numbers on it, and it's got that funny little shape that makes it what we notice as a key. But keys, even if you make your own locks and put in your own keys, et cetera, if I have a picture of your key, I can make another key because the numbers correspond to the cut positions on the key. The higher the number, the lower the cut. If you can see the second and third, those map to the two sixes, and the three is the highest one. And so if I know the key manufacturer and the numbers alone, I can forge a key. And if I just have a picture, even if I don't know any of that, I can just tell, hey, it's just about this length, and then try and forge my own. And then the locks are gone. And speaking of locks, why bother messing with any of this when you can just attack the entryway? So door attacks, under the door attack. How many of you guys have heard of this? No? So imagine you like normally use a door. You unlock the door, you walk in, you close it, locks behind you. But you can trick a door by pulling on the handle on the inside and get it to open with a metal wire like this. You can have it as a metal wire and then sort of like those key card retractors. And as soon as you fit it underneath there, you can pull out on the key retractor and it'll pull on the handle from the inside. And the door doesn't know any better. It assumes that you're pulling from the inside. Also with doors like this, you can push on the latch near the handle, which keeps the door shut in place. And in doing so, you make it so that the door thinks its handle is already pulled and will swing open like it normally should. And you can do this with credit cards, just a piece of plastic, or sometimes really, really thick paper. Also, a different way to get into doors is just taking off the door. If you notice here, the hinges are actually front facing, and that's what's keeping the door in place. That's what it swings on. But if you take that out with what a hammer and a flathead screwdriver, yes, it'll be noisy, but if you put on a costume of pretending to be a construction worker with a clipboard and you start knocking out the hinges, people aren't gonna question you and you haven't really damaged the door and you can just pull it out and walk in. And so I bring all of this to your attention to say, do your part. Cybersecurity is not just people in hoodies and typing away at the keyboard. It's you guys, it's people, it's the physical and the cyber. Each of you plays an important role and you can do the following things, right? Next time you walk into your office or workplace or school, look around, are there cameras? And if there are cameras, are there any camera blind spots? Not telling you to do anything malicious, but just take a look around. Is there a different way to get in from what I normally do? If I have a lock and a key or a key card to the front door, is there a back door that I can get in through? Maybe there's a way I can mess with the reader without breaking it and still manage to get in. And a big one is, do I know this person? And it might seem insignificant. Many of you guys go to large schools or you go to a large workplace and you're like, hey, I know that coworker very briefly. He looks familiar. Or even if you see someone else that's not normally there, you may just think, oh, well, they're a contractor showing up, they're the janitor, et cetera. 
But if someone's doing something suspicious or just there in the area that you haven't seen them in, it doesn't hurt to ask, hey, do I know you and are you supposed to be here? It's a quick little conversation that can prevent your organization, your school, or even your area, personal area, from getting attacked. And I bring all of you guys to be the lens for your community. Please do your part and raise concerns if you ever see them. And thank you.